Hello, welcome back. So this is a quick video, hopefully it'll be quick, on understanding source analysis essays. This video you're going to need to watch right before you do your source analysis in a social studies class or particularly my social studies class. So just to quickly get into it, source analysis essays in social studies are four paragraph essays. Okay, you just analyze source one, two, three, and then we'll talk about that fourth paragraph later. There is no introduction. This isn't a argument essay. This isn't a essay that you write in LA class or English class. Okay, this is a written assignment for where you respond, you analyze some images, it could be a quote, it could be a graph, some sort of information. Okay, you're responding to what you are seeing and reading. And there are questions, there is a particular question that you're supposed to answer in a source analysis, which you know, when you look at the assignment, that'll be clear, it'll be in a box, typically. In source analysis essays, you're also providing in some sort of evidence, typically we call those case studies to support or oppose the interpretation of this source. So this is necessary. If you're a social studies 30 student and you're watching this, so this blurb here is for you, which says that, you know, you are less so required to bring in a case study, some evidence, and rather you're supposed to focus on making some connections to thinkers or ideologies taught in the course. Okay, so you need to really understand the ideologies and perspectives that are taught in Social Studies 30 and be able to reference those in terms or in regards to the source, the images that you're being given or the quotes. For grade 10 and 11, you know, you want to be able to bring in reference material that helps you build your argument towards, you know, opposing or supporting the interpretation of the source. Um, just some quick tips on it as well as we move forward. If you do have a quote, you want to avoid using the entire quote in your response. What I mean by that is you don't want to just copy paste the quote put that into your response and have that as your analysis. You want to break things down, look at small sections of the quote, you know, analyze it, try to give some insight on what this person is trying to say based on that quote. Okay. Don't just big chunk, put it into your response and then say, yeah, I analyzed it. Look, here's the source. You also don't want to do the complete opposite and just ignore it and don't even address the perspective that the quote takes. Okay. The reason you should break the quote into sections is that it demonstrates your analysis or interpretation ability. So if you can go piece by piece and explain like what the author's perspective was and where you got that from the source, it just tells the person marking and reading it that you really understand where this information is coming from. And then, yeah, if you go above and beyond and provide some insight of what they might uh, believe, why they might have that you know, perspective, that's just going to help you even more. Right. And again, right here, we're talking about it helps to demonstrate that, you know, specifically where and what the analysis is. OK, for images, uh, hopefully you're learning some stuff in your um, English classes about how to analyze an image. But you might want to reference some things as symbols, labels, words, you know, some themes. Maybe it's a caricature, whatever it is. Right. You're going to have to reference the information and how it's being uh, expressed as well. Now, when you're writing, basic grammar rules still apply. So I have a note here. Poor writing mechanics can lead to poor marks overall. What I mean by that is that if you're writing in a sloppy or very clunky manner and it's like very painful to just read your writing, even if you have good ideas, if your mechanics are bad, it can take away from your overall mark because it's hard to read. It's hard to figure out. Like maybe it's not properly organized. Maybe the sentences aren't smooth, even though there's good ideas in there. Sometimes it can detract from your mark because of the poor writing mechanics. Additionally, you still want to focus on capitalization, sentence structure, punctuation, indenting, like you still want to make sure you're writing properly. Just because it's social studies and a source analysis doesn't mean all those rules go out the window. When we look at the rubric, you know, I'll explain that more closely. Be ob as objective as possible. So None of the following, none of this I think, in my opinion, I statements, etc. You want to avoid I statements. 
A better alternative is to say the speaker, the author, the source, you know, the artist, you know, whatever it is, right? Like you, you want to be um, speaking in the third person because source analysis typically, you know, it's not about what you think. It's about what's in the source and what information you can connect that. Again, with the argument paper as well, it's not about what you think. It's about the perspectives. Um, there is one assignment in the Social 30-2 diploma where I believe you're allowed to use I statements, but it is not the source analysis. So in your source analysis response, you want to make sure you're not using those I statements. And as you can already see in the formatting of my document, you want to indent the start of a new paragraph and make a space in between them, right? So there's a whole line available. Again, this is just makes it easier to read and it's just part of the, you know, the, the mechanics of writing, right? You don't want to just give one big wall of text. You want to separate your ideas. You want to separate your source response. Now, an important note here on plagiarism, which is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. So notice how I have the quotation in, or the, this, this, um, this uh, definition in quotation marks. It's because I got it from Google. I want to say in one of my previous documents, I actually had the source here as well, but I don't right now. So I'm acknowledging that with these words inside the quotations that they're not mine. So I'm avoiding this plagiarism. In addition, I should have the reference as well somewhere. Now for a source analysis, you shouldn't be doing all this extra research and bringing in all this extra information. It's not a research assignment. It is a source analysis. So you want to be able to talk about the perspective in the source. And then, yeah, you do want to bring in some information from class. But again, it shouldn't be an in-depth, a very, uh, you know, research assignment. That's not what you're doing here. So you definitely don't want to take someone else's work or ideas and then say, oh, these are mine. This is my understanding of this topic. Okay. If you use someone else's writing, you must put it into quotations. If you add someone else's writing or ideas, you must also reference it. This is best done with a list of references at the end of the assignment. So again, for your, th these notes are just on plagiarism because again, a source analysis is not about doing research, right? It's more so about understanding the perspective in the source. Okay, now, you know, if you're kind of looking at more advanced writing, ask your teacher how they would like you to document your references. In university, it'll be different. If your response is similar to another student's essay, this could be considered plagiarism. So, you know, I had a case uh, a year or two ago where some students, you know, basically all the sentences were the same, just a couple words were different. Still plagiarism, right? Because plagiarism is also about ideas. It's not just the exact words. It's also the ideas, okay? If you do not list where you got your information from, you will be flagged for plagiarism and can be given a zero. And that's non-negotiable. That's in my course syllabus. You also will be unlikely to get a redo. So don't cheat, okay? This is all about your own writing, your own ability to articulate and express yourself. Okay, so continuing with thesis essays, we have our general writing guide. So one thing to keep in mind here, Again, it's four paragraphs. So paragraphs one, two, and three are your source analysis where you go and you, you know, break down the interpretation, some critical thinking, some links and connections, and a concluding sentence for each source. Okay, so let's look at that. So you always want to start by interpreting the source. So summarizing what you are seeing in the source briefly and clearly is the bare minimum. You know, that's what will get you 50, 60, 70% right? Because, you know, that's just the bare minimum. Now, adding in a bit of that upper level analysis, the insightful stuff, that's what gets you this, you know, the 80, 85, 90, 95, 100% potentially. We already talked about quotes and how to deal with that. So again, if you are analyzing a quote in your source analysis essay, you want to break it down into chunks or reference specific parts of the quote specifically. You don't want to just have a big chunk. Next step, and this is a bit of a kind of a generalized statement, it's a bit vague, but you want to provide some critical thinking regarding the information in the image. Okay, so that's kind of with the interpretation of the source. This is how you get that 80, 90, 100% or high 70s as well. You want to expand on the information 
from the image with some unique thought. You know, so what other information can you connect to the source? Can you make connections to additional information or causes of whatever is happening in this source, right? So, so this is also kind of tied into the next step of bringing in, you know, some sort of case study, some sort of analysis to further your understanding, your demonstration of your understanding of what's happening in this source, right? And this is where you, in, in these two sections, this is where you are offered an opportunity to demonstrate to whoever's marking, whoever's reading your essay, that you, you know, at the baseline, understand what you're supposed to be doing. You know, maybe that 65 to 75 percent is where you actually put in some effort. But the 80 to 100 range is where, like, clearly you understand this information very well, how it applies in the real world and some of the challenges, right? You want to get into that critical thinking. Okay. Here we have identified links to either globalization for grade 10, nationalism for grade 11, or ideologies in grade 12. You want to make connections, so examples, to what you have learned in class which support your understanding, right? So you want to reference this stuff. The reason why I've highlighted this blue is because if you don't bring in case studies, and I've verified this with a couple other people who have experienced marking diplomas, it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, for you to get above a 65%. If you just analyze the source, you just kind of give your two cents on it, and maybe your two cents are worth half a cent, um, you're not going to get very good marks, right? Like you need to bring in some sort of connection to the material from class, right? And again, emphasizing that this isn't a research essay. This is a source analysis, right? You're demonstrating your understanding of the material, your, un your understanding of the perspective being presented in the source. You know, you can explain ideas that support or reject the view the source takes, right? The perspective the source takes. And then you always want to wrap up your analysis paragraph with one to two concluding sentences, which reconnect to the main point of your paragraph. Okay. You don't want to just stop with the case study. You always want to tie things up full circle, wrap it up, conclude, right? A lot of that is with mechanics, and it just makes your essay and your writing just a lot more polished and cleaner, right? So don't ignore that bit. After you've done your three, you've analyzed your three sources, your paragraph four, you're analyzing the relationships. So, you know, you can describe relationships among the sources, you know, what overall issue, topic or idea links all these sources. You can describe relationships between the sources. So some of them might contrast, they might be opposite, they might have an opposite perspective. Some of them might have some similarities, right? Maybe you want to compare some things in the sources. Okay, does the information in one source support or oppose that in another, right? You're, you're looking at the relationships that exist between the three things you have been given to examine for your assignment. Now, here's a little important note here. Reconnect with evidence you provided in the individual source analysis. Do not add new information here. Your fourth paragraph is not where you go in and, you know, oh, man, I had this brilliant idea. Let me add that in there to get extra marks. It's not where you do that. Do that in your analysis portion, your, your paragraph one, two, and three, your critical thinking and your links. Don't add in new information to your conclusion, just reiterate what you've already said, okay? Now, if you're in grade 12, uh, take a look at this note, just quickly read that, but for my social 30-2 or 30-1 courses, you know, I'll have a separate video because they're, particularly in 30-2, the assignment is a bit different and what you do in that last paragraph is a bit different. Moving on, let's take a look at the rubric. So I just want to point out this uh, note I made here. So in my personal opinion, you know, the point is not to focus on the grade, but the skill of being articulate, right? The point, the reason that, you know, s these essay assignments are given, one way to look at it is, oh, okay, I have class, I got to go to school, I have a, an essay, I got to write it and get a grade. Sure, that's one way and, you know, that will work and you can function with that as well. But another way to understand you know, writing is that read your, your ability to think, speak, and write are essentially the same. And so essays are a formal way of expressing your ability to communicate. So, you know, ask yourself, like, do you want to be someone who's specific and accurate in the way that they communicate with people? 
You know, do you want to be confident in the way you express yourself, right? And, and keep in mind, this is interpretation of sources, but, you know, do you want to be convincing? Do you want to be logical, right? And again, specific, right? This is the focus on the excellent. Do you want to sound fluent? Do you want your speech and your writing to be organized, to be convincing and engaging, right? Like, do you want people to listen to you? When challenges come in your life, do you want to be able to effectively communicate what is going on inside your head to the people around you, to whoever necessarily needs that? That's, you know, the real focus of learning how to write and emphasizing the importance of writing, right? And in terms of grades, like, yeah, again, if you want those excellent marks, you can't just do a generalized blah, 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 whatever, right? I just need to get this assignment done you know, that's going to be more so around the satisfactory where you're just general, you know, you're valid, right? But you're not specific, you're not accurate, you're not insightful, definitely not, right? Insightful is going above and beyond and being very specific and articulate of how you, you know, convey your information, right? So always take a look at the rubric, you know, you want to read these um, kind of blurbs up here, the focus. So, Interpretation of sources is your quality of interpretation, right? And so again, the main focus here is the best responses are insightful, they're specific and accurate. The, the kind of middle are, they're valid, they're general, they might have minor errors or confusion. The evidence they brought in is rele relevant but general or incomplete, right? And the worst responses are, you know, mistaken or irrelevant, right? There's no evidence, it's incomplete. Right, so you don't want to be, you don't want to communicate at this level, right? In life, you're not gonna really benefit by communicating at this level, right? Like ideally, you want to at least be at the satisfactory, and understand that it might take years of effort to get yourself communicating at a level where, you know, you are at satisfactory depending on where you start, or excellent depending on where you start. But refining your ability to express and to communicate. Uh, to express yourself and to communicate is going to benefit you anywhere you go, right? Like you might, you'll, you're likely never going to write an essay again once you leave high school, unless you go to, you know, college or university, but you are always going to be communicating with people. So again, ask yourself, do you want to be specific and accurate? Or do you want to be, you know, mistaken and irrelevant in your speech or overgeneralized and confused, right? Like what kind of communicator do you want to be? So that would be my main emphasis on the, you know, the rubric, but make sure you take a look at it and figure out like what your goal is, where would you like to be and read that section.